Well, we've all read quite sensational press reports giving us dire warnings of the various health hazards associated with the use of low-energy lighting products like compact fluorescent lamps. We hear that they can contain dangerous levels of mercury, that they can emit harmful radiation, or even that they can trigger migraine or epileptic attacks. You would think, wouldn't you, that the government would protect us from such apparently dangerous products. Well, not only is the government encouraging the use of these products, but so are most other governments around the world. Scientists, too, agree that the risks are minimal and far outweigh the advantages that low energy lighting brings. I talked to Adrian Kitching, who's sales director of Mega Man UK, about the real and perceived hazards involved. As one of the world's largest manufacturers of compact fluorescent lamps, Mega Man is well placed to be a very reliable source of information about these products. Here's what he had to say. Let's deal with some of the general points first. Um, compact fluorescent lamps are inherently much safer than tungsten lamps. Um, a tungsten lamp produces an awful lot of heat, so particularly for children, um, it's a much safer option to use a compact fluorescent. Yeah. Tungstens um, being the traditional light bulbs that we're all familiar with. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. yes. Um, it's also true to say as well that many of the compact fluorescent lamps nowadays actually have a silicon coating over them, so if you drop them, um, they will contain all the glass as well. So they are generally much safer. But how can you produce a product that could actually release mercury into a household? Well, the, the mercury, it's, it's about getting it into proportion. The mercury is governed by, by very tight EU regulations. It has to be under five milligrams of mercury. And in fact, all Mega Man lamps are actually under three milligrams. So we're doing a little bit more than most of our um, competitors to ensure that there's a safe form out there. Um, furthermore, the, the amalgam, the mercury type that we use, isn't liquid mercury. Um, it's actually in a solid form, so that's no more different to what is actually available on everyday items. Um, there are real, though, medical concerns. People hear what you say, but when there's children involved, when there's families involved, they're worried about the medical effect uh, on them. How much have you actually gone into the possibility of medical problems? Uh, we've looked at this in, in a great detail, actually. Um, traditional lamps use liquid mercuries and, and and the development has gone on for, for many, many years. Mega Man only uses amalgam, which is perfectly safe. Um, you have amalgam in your teeth, you have 500 milligrams of amalgam in a typical thermometer that everybody would find around the house. So a small proportion in, in a compact fluorescent lamp is really nothing to worry about. What about sufferers of lupus? Because I know that's a, a particular concern. Um, sufferers of lupus um, can be, it's generally women, which we tend to find suffer from lupus. Um, it's a photoimmune disease. Um, you're absolutely correct. Um, really, anybody that has a sensitivity to different types of light um, really needs to be sort of looked after. Um, we've done some extensive testing um, last year to um, discover whether there was any empirical or factual data to say that these lamps cause any difficulties, and that's not the case. They also, though, emit electromagnetic radiation. Now, that would worry anybody in a household. They do emit electromagnetic radiation, ab absolutely. Um, but it's in a very small degree. Um, most of it was in the olden days, five or seven years ago, when compact fluorescent lamps first came out, was at mains frequency. Now, modern lamps operate at high frequency, so they don't interfere with televisions um, and other household items where you, you have more of a signal, actually, from a GPS phone.